so easy to write. All right, welcome back, everyone. So today we have a uh, Platinum nineteen seventy six B six, where <laughs> God zero solves. I think a lot of Platinum sixes get no solves, right? Like the time con controls are really harsh. Okay. Um, anyways, so you have like n complex numbers and you look at a complex number w such that it's square I guess equals this. So, so I guess right away I should say like w squared is apparently equal to... And you would like to show that um, the real part of w is at most the sum of the absolute values of the x's. Do you think people are better at math now because of computers? Depends on what you mean by computers. I mean, internet is pretty strong, right? Your kids are too young to know what the word dial-up means. <laughs> the notion of square root is well-defined in like there's a plus minus sign, so if you have a complex number, it has two square roots. Like for every complex number z, there's two numbers w such that w squared equals z. And I mean it's only up to a sign, but okay. So actually, this thing is sharp if um x squared. Yeah, so there's, it's there's sort of a triangle inequality type thing where if all the z's point in the same direction, then actually. Actually, is it sharp? Am I off by like a constant fact? If, if all the z's are 1, this is square root n. Oh, actually, so it's not, it's, real, it's not as sharp as I thought. It's also interesting because if I set all the zi's to be pure imaginary, um, okay. I'm just trying to think like what would an equality case that isn't stupid look like? Um Like I would I thought the equality case for a moment was if all the z's point in the same direction, but that's not correct. Um Actually, so if like z1 is 1, right? And the others are like i or something. Then it con the x's here contribute nothing. So that's actually an interesting statement. It's like you, if I have a big contribution on the plus i axis, then. I'm not supposed to, it's not, the absolute value would increase, but the real part might not because you get a, uh, when you take the square root, something weird happens. Okay. No, sorry, I misspoke. Uh, ignore everything I just said for the last minute. Um, can you just square and Kochi? Maybe. <laughs> How does that work? It's like...
Okay, so you let W is A plus BI, that's fine. So A squared minus B squared is the real part of, or, Okay, yeah, maybe I should just do it this way. All right, I'll find sum of like xk squared minus yk squared. Do I drop all the 2xk yk? I, yeah, maybe, so maybe we can actually just kind of like drop all of the, um, so a squared minus b squared is allegedly some x k squared minus y k squared, where x k y k are reals, and a b is equal to x k y k. So, in particular, I ought to be able to all right. I guess we're using quote unquote coordinates. I can bound AB. Wait, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> so it's like AB is less than or equal to some x squared, x and y squared or something? So this is this is less than the square root of Okay, what does that do? Because the thing is, this is a difference, right? Like, sum of x squared minus y, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but, but then what? This difference... Do I write this as sum mode? Do I just sub in y? Okay, let's sub in y. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll cross our fingers and see if this works. Sum xk squared, and then sum xk squared uh, minus a squared minus b squared, is what you guys are telling me. Okay, but then what does that do? So, let me move this over to the right. So if s is equal to the sum of xk squared, can I just show what did I miss? <laughs> So a squared b squared is equal to s and minus a squared minus b squared s. Does this factor? I think it factors. Okay, so s is a non-negative real number. So it follows that a squared is less than or equal to some <laughs> So it was okay, I wasn't wrong. Oh my god. Cause I was looking at this earlier and I'm like, it's weird that when the ZIs point in the same direction, the bound doesn't work. But uh, <laughs> I mean they use the bound that <laughs> A is less than or equal to square root sub k x k squared. Which is, I mean, it's true that this is less than sum of xk absolute value. All right, get baited. Um, I don't know. At least put like over root n or something. I don't know. Okay, so the bound is very non. This 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 inequality is super loose.
Oh, so this actually just works because it factors. Okay, fine. All right. We're done. Can I propose one? Uh, we we took prom submissions a while ago. I think we're done with prom submissions. Come at the start of the stream. Um, that's when we do the voting for which problems we want to do. No, I'm going to quickly write this up. Yeah, I guess like... If, if the problem had given us the... Because you can just put on like a constant factor in front of the... Well, not really. No, sorry, I take that back. I don't know. This, this is the correct statement in some sense. And then the thing that they asked for is a really weak version of it. Okay, I think that's all. This equality if and all- no, the problem is that this inequality here is super loose. Like, some of thing- th this inequality is super loose. No, wait, what? Are, are they talking about the- If z1 plus z2 equals 0, it's fun. I don't know. No, no, this one. The, the, the very last thing is that, like, this inequality is very weak. The, the Kochi is here. This is the Kochi. That part, that's fine. This thing is not Kochi. This is called, like, it's called- this one is Kochi if you have a factor of n, but then the inequality sign flips the other way. So th yeah, this inequality is- yeah, because because of this step, the bound is basically- I think almost essentially never sharp. Like, you need- um, most of the xi's have to be zero in order for um, this to hold. <laughs> it's called cavity. Alright, um...